I will briefly introduce as well to Wilhelm Heidmeier. Wilhelm Heidmeier is a sociologist and professor of education specialized in socialization. From 1996 to 2013, he headed the Institute for Interdisciplinary Research on Conflict and Violence at Bielefeld University, where he holds, since retiring as director, the position of the senior research professor. He is an eminent specialist of right-wing extremism, terrorism, cultural violence, and social disintegration. He was the leader of various research groups focusing on problems related to these questions of violence financed by the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. Before his academic career, Heidmeier worked as a typesetter. Mm -hmm. And he has been a member of the German Social Democratic Party, SPD, for a long time until he resigned in 1992 in protest against the asylum policy of the SPD. He is now also the founding editor-in-chief uh, of the International Journal of Conflict and Violence. Um, well, he was the, the, the editor-in-chief from 2008 to 2014, still contributing to, to the organ. And uh, well, he told me yesterday about this uh, new research he's doing uh, comparing the violence of certain groups in South Africa, in, uh, of Pakistan, and a city like Dortmund, which uh, really uh, has very, very interesting results. I only want to cite two recent pu publications of Willem Heidmeier, which is uh, Control of Violence, uh, published in New York in 2011, edited with Heinz Gerd Haupt, Stefan Maltaner and Andrea Kirchner, and School Shootings, International Research, Case Studies and Concepts for Prevention, uh, published in New York as well uh, in 2013, edited with Niels Böckler, Thorsten Seger and Peter Sitze. Uh, his uh, talk today uh, will focus on a key concept of Heidmeier's research with this group-focused enmity. So this is uh, how his uh, uh, paper is called, Group-Focused Enmity, Social Disintegration and Right-Wing Populism in a Process of Escalation. So please help me to uh, welcome Wilhelm Heidmeier. Mm. Uh, thank you very much uh, for invitation. And uh, first I have to say that uh, I'm not uh, a philosophist uh, or a political scientist to interpret the whole world. Um, uh, I'm only a social scientist working on theoretical approaches like uh, integration, uh, disintegration dynamics in modern societies and uh, uh, combining with empirical research uh, uh, mainly on the issue of group-focused enmity, uh, right-wing populism and right-wing extremism. Insofar as the, the topic uh, of my presentation, it's not surprising. Um, group-focused enmity, social disintegration on, uh, and right-wing populism in a process of escalation. And that's uh, um, explicitly uh, necessary to stress it. The main thesis of my presentation is based on an article in 2001. Uh, the title is Authoritarian Capitalism, Depletion, 
uh, of democracy and right-wing populism. The thesis in 2001 included three elements. We have to observe uh, over a long time and development on the one hand that the global capitalism gains more and more control concerning economic and societal development. And on the other hand, uh, the democratic politics have had an, a dramatic loss of control to develop an integrated society uh, and avoiding social inequality and so on. Second, this loss of control of democratic politics evokes a depletion of democracy, a loss of control concerning the biography of people, a loss of influence uh, of unions, for example, and processes of social disintegration and mistrust uh, in the elites and the system. Third, the conclusion of these uh, article and the thesis in 2001 was the winner of these processes will be right-wing populism. This is a framework of my presentation. Okay, it's uh, obvious a ghost goes on in Europe, the ghost of right-wing populism and nationalism, uh, but the question is, is this the first step to a new fascism? We will see, and we have to be carefully on this topic. Um, and we will see in the discussion maybe or in the whole day. In Europe, you, everybody of you knows this, the development of uh, right-wing populism is not new. Austria, the Netherlands, Hungary, Poland, Denmark, France uh, are only some examples. In Germany, the situation changes since 2014 when the political movement Pegida, you know this, was coming up, especially in the eastern part of Germany, and then the political party, the alternative for Germany. Since this time, 2014, uh, there exists a political bundle of a long time existing right-wing populist attitudes in the German population. And in our uh, longitudinal research project between 2002 and 2011 with the title Group Focused Enmity and annual representative surveys, we can report what have been existed before uh, the right-wing movement and party comes up. Um, and the, the concept of Group Focused Enmity focused on weak groups in the society which are the targets of devaluation, discrimination, and violence. To become such targets depends on the belonging on, uh, to such groups, independent of the individual behavior. And uh, graph uh, one uh, can show the syndrome uh, of group-focused enmity with at last uh, 12 elements. Uh, this includes migrants, Muslims, youth, homeless people, homosexuals, asylum seekers. Um, and uh, the research is focused to look at the climate, uh, on the climate in this society, uh, how the, the uh, population uh, are dealing with uh, and uh, have a special prejudice against these groups. And the empirical analysis can demonstrate that this is a syndrome. And that is uh, very important because um, the right-wing populism can take one element uh, whenever they like to put it on the ag agenda uh, to have uh, especially prejudiced uh, for the population. All of them have a common background. The common background is the ideology of inequality in the sense of unequal worth. The ideology focused on two main differences. First, the difference between uh, in-groups and out-groups. 
And second, the difference of superiority and inferiority. And these are important criteria of the right-wing populism ideology to establish a homogeneous society. And what are the results of the uh, attitudes in the German population on the background of societal development in the last decade, in time of financial crisis, political crisis, and social crisis as fear of social uh, disintegration? And uh, have a look on uh, 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 a framework because we have every time um, to look on a special dynamics between uh, several actors in, in three contexts. On uh, the first, uh, is there is a, a powerful uh, a political uh, actor uh, like government, the influence of uh, capitalistic actors, and so on. They produce the circumstances of integration or disintegration for several groups. For example, the, the fear of uh, disint social disintegration and so on. Results can be um, the development of group-focused enmity in the population, or attitudes against the mentioned weak groups um, I uh, uh, told before. And third, there are political actors of right-wing uh, populist movements or parties and right-wing extremist groups who, on the one hand, get legitimation by the uh, attitudes uh, from the population, and on the other hand, they uh, offer them a home for their, their aggression and rage. Additionally, they uh, criticize the political uh, establishment and the situation uh, in, in the society, sometimes with anti-capitalist uh, arguments. In some, there are um, very uh, difficult interaction processes, and it is a question how to, uh, to, to look at uh, what happens, what works there, and it's uh, rather difficult. And uh, I marked some arrows. I haven't time enough to, to explain this in detail, but we can talk uh, later on. What are the criteria of uh, social uh, integration or disintegration, what happens in these uh, fields. And therefore, we, ha we have a, a special uh, uh, concept. Um, and uh, integration is not only for uh, migrants and refugees. Uh, integration also uh, is focused on part of the, of the German population, because some of them are, are also not integrated, but we have to talk about what means integration or disintegration. And therefore, we have uh, three dimensions. You can uh, look at this. Uh, the, the first is a uh, the the um, uh, dimension concerning uh, reproduction by the labor market and the, uh, the especially important aspect is that we uh, differ between objective factors of integration and subjective uh, factors. And that's uh, the, uh, the subjective factor is the line of recognition. Uh, the others are objective, I have a job or I have not a job, and on the other hand, I uh, have an interpretation uh, if I gain recognition or not. And uh, the second uh, uh, dimension cons is concerning on the institutional integration. Uh, uh, for example, to have a vote in the pub public sphere, in the political participation, and so on, that uh, the politicians will listen to me or to my group uh, concerning uh, a special uh, criteria for an integrated society like fairness, solidarity, or, or justice. And uh, the third dimension pointed out uh, the belonging uh, to uh, milieus and so on. And every time it's uh, important to look what happens on the, on the level of recognition. 
the positional recognition to have a job in, in the labor market, uh, moral recognition to have a vote in the public uh, sphere, and emotional recognition uh, in the belonging uh, uh, groups of belonging. The central thesis is there exists a broad impression of recognition deficits in the, uh, to, in the sub, um, established system. Uh, the, the people will look for, uh, and if uh, this is true for uh, some of the population, uh, they will look for alternatives to gain recognition in another way and, um, and to have uh, another uh, chance uh, to be listened to by uh, other uh, politicians and uh, so on. And um, these uh, looking for other alternatives is sometimes combined with uh, group-focused enmity to mark out groups and their devaluation and discrimination and uh, to uh, mark these in-groups and out-groups on the one hand and to mark their own superiority and to mark the inferiority of the others. And um, insofar, uh, we, we have to look uh, into the process uh, because that's uh, not uh, uh, only one step, it's the process. And uh, over a long time, nobody have observed this in a very intensive uh, way. And have a look uh, on uh, some empirical data. Um, you, can, you can see that uh, um, there is a, uh, uh, there are data concerning the, the group-focused enmity and the threat by crisis, and it's obvious that uh, the um, uh, that the people who uh, have uh, a lot of uh, problems with the, with the crisis, they uh, have a much higher uh, um, uh, results in devaluation of uh, some uh, groups. And uh, we can go further on, and it's the same picture. If people have uh, a lot of disintegration experience in the global world and uh, in the rapid change uh, of society, um, then they uh, have a much higher values concerning the uh, uh, group focused enmity and the several uh, groups. And uh, then we have to uh, look uh, on uh, uh, um, participation, and uh, it's the same picture. If they, they have no chance uh, uh, for participation, they have a higher level of this uh, devaluation against weak uh, groups. And, um, and these are only some impressions uh, of what, what happens there, and insofar it is necessary uh, to have recognition uh, concerning participation, to have recognition concerning the difficulties w w with all the rapid change and so on, and maybe uh, the, the ruling uh, and, and the, the governed um, uh, elites don't uh, look at these uh, um, problems. And, and insofar we, we have uh, uh, to look at an, another model I mentioned before uh, in the main thesis. Um, um, we, we have had uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, control, uh, gain of control in the global capitalism. We have a lot of control in the uh, democratic politics, and here you can see the elements of the integration, disintegration, uh, 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 politics, and uh, that's uh, uh, the, the model, uh, and ev in every time we have 
uh, combinations of results uh, between uh, the, the, the high level, the structural level, and the interpretation by the uh, population. And um, then uh, we have uh, tested uh, the, the model by, uh, with our data, and um, it works. Uh, it was published, if you are interested, 2011 in the German journal Leviathan. And um, the, uh, um, the result uh, will be um, that it is necessary uh, to go further on what are the right-wing populist, uh, populist uh, attitudes, and uh, insofar we um, can uh, uh, have a look um, what happens there, and insofar it is necessary to uh, uh, mention how the uh, how the uh, um, right-wing populist attitude in the population is, has been measured. We focused uh, on the uh, uh, criteria of uh, anti-Semitism, um, then xenophobia, and authoritarian aggression. And um, in this time, um, the right-wing populist uh, concept uh, changes a little bit. And we have me the measurement uh, in 2002, and at this time, uh, there is a, a very uh, intensive element, especially in France and in Austria, uh, the anti-Semitism. In Germany, the, the right-wing populists don't work with anti-Semitism, not in, in the public sphere, maybe in the attitudes or so on, but not in the public sphere. And insofar, it's, uh, it's a uh, structural element of uh, uh, right-wing populism to change the, 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 the topics. Uh, and if it is necessary, they, they put the topics from the table. And uh, in the other case, if they are, it is necessary, they put it on the agenda. <coughs> and um, insofar, uh, we, we have to uh, uh, set it what uh, um, uh, happens uh, in, in this uh, time. And uh, if we have done the, uh, this uh, research in 2002, a long time before the, the social movement, Pegida or others, other movements or uh, the alternative exist, there was, uh, on the basis of the, the mentioned criteria, uh, there was a 20% uh, uh, in the representative survey. And um, uh, we published this uh, at the time, but there was no reaction, no, not from the political parties uh, uh, or from the uh, journalists. And uh, uh, insofar, it's uh, uh, rather crazy nowadays, the, the, uh, uh, they say, oh, what has happened last time? No, the, 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 the basis uh, was uh, at a long time before existing, but uh, nobody uh, was interested. Uh, because they, uh, the, the argument was, uh, uh, maybe in the other uh, countries there are experts for mobilization, like in France, uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen, in Austria, Haider, and so on. We don't have uh, uh, not su such an uh, expert of mobilization. We have learned our, hist uh, our lesson of history. Uh, but that's uh, absolutely crazy, but uh, that's another case. And uh, there are uh, other uh, results. Uh, I, I cannot um, uh, put it now on, on the uh, uh, agenda, but you can read it all the time. And um, so we can uh, stress the element that over time there exists 
uh, such um, attitudes in the population, and uh, this is uh, the, the uh, uh, longitudinal study concerning uh, the attitudes by the social situation. And you can see that uh, we have uh, mostly the attitudes in, in, uh, in groups with uh, uh, lower education, lower classes or lower groups, but also in such groups with uh, higher opportunities in the uh, society, and that's uh, the, the, the dangerous uh, element in this. And um, the, the other, and that's uh, also obvious, also in the longitudinal study, that uh, the, the attitudes uh, of, uh, of feeling of influential um, uh, especially to have not a vote uh, in the public sphere, in the political sphere, uh, increases uh, concerning the, 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 the people who uh, are added to the uh, right-wing populist uh, potential. And um, always the same. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, the, the development... Uh, uh, that there is a increasing uh, of uh, uh, willingness uh, concerning violence in this population, in this part of the, of the population. And uh, insofar, um, uh, there was a potential uh, uh, and um, nobody was uh, interesting. And also we published uh, these uh, uh, data, and especially between 2009, you can see it here, it, between 2009 and 2011, after the crisis the, uh, of financial uh, uh, problems in the world, then the, the, the curve uh, uh, increases uh, uh, and the potential was, uh, was there. And it's only uh, a problem to have uh, some uh, experts for mobilization. And then they came up, uh, uh, namely uh, the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, Pegida and um, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, AfD, the Alternative for Germany, but uh, nevertheless, uh, um, uh, such attitudes uh, also were included in the other political parties. Uh, that's there uh, are no. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, it, it was uh, denied uh, sometimes by the other uh, political parties because uh, they always, when we published this, it was Bielefeld alarm uh, and uh, nothing else. Uh, okay, uh, if we have a look on uh, on what's um, there. Uh, the topics the right-wing populist uh, movements are dealing with, there are uh, four main topics. Uh, the, the first, the fear uh, of social disintegration in the population in the sense of status uh, relegation. Second, the fear of cultural infiltration um, by foreigners, by migrants, Muslims, uh, and so on. Third, uh, the political denationalization by the European Union and force the alienation in the sense of criticism of the democratic representation and against the political elite. Um, and um, the, the special uh, uh, arguments of, uh, of this uh, experts of mobilization are working with uh, emotions. That's the, the most important uh, uh, topic. And uh, uh, nowadays, uh, journalists uh, and politicians, also scientists, uh, do not know how to deal with this, because uh, if there is only an uh, emotionalization uh, in the political sphere, uh, no arguments are uh, um, uh, effectful. And uh, insofar, we have uh, to look 
that there can be, uh, that it will not be the end of, uh, of the party, so to say. And um, the next step, uh, I have to uh, look uh, to an uh, escalation model. And uh, all the uh, implications I, I have uh, presented must be integrated in an escalation process. And uh, um, I stress this every time because the attitudes in the population uh, has a uh, special and important role in an escalation process. Because you can see here the, the attitudes, you, you can see the, the model, uh, this, is, uh, this are the, the attitudes in the population. Uh, also our own attitudes. And, uh, and uh, especially the attitudes of right-wing populist uh, people. But, and uh, and uh, the, the problem is, uh, these attitudes deliver uh, the legitimation for aggressive speeches in the right-wing populist groups. And in this model, there are, on the one hand, uh, the attitudes in the, in the population, and then we have three uh, radicalized uh, groups uh, in, in this uh, escalation uh, uh, model. Uh, the first uh, group, uh, there are, are included right-wing populist groups and uh, some other uh, social groups who are not dealing with violence, but they are dealing with uh, aggressive speeches and, and so on. And the next group, uh, that's uh, anti-system groups, uh, they are uh, sometimes from a right-wing a right-wing extremism group, and they are dealing with violence sometimes on the basis of the hate speeches uh, in, in the uh, uh, right-wing populist groups. And insofar as it is an escalation, and uh, our problem, and then uh, it goes further on to the support networks for terrorist cells, that are the blood and HANA uh, and so on. Uh, they are a very, uh, on a very high level of, uh, of violence uh, till to the terrorist uh, cells and, and so on. And the problem is that we, in the most cases, we do not know uh, the trigger causes, uh, how to change the, the groups, uh, how to change from, from the uh, attitudes in, in the population um, right-wing uh, populist attitudes uh, to the right-wing uh, right uh, populist groups as a collective um, a group, and um, uh, then to go further on. And we have we have a, a, a special case uh, from uh, from uh, the last months uh, as a, a speech. Uh, a speaker of uh, the Pegida movement, then goes, uh, goes on uh, to attack in Dresden, attack a mosque, uh, and, and so on, with a bomb. And uh, first, he, he only was a speaker uh, in, the, in the movement, and then after that, uh, he uh, goes on uh, and attacks uh, a mosque. And insofar, there are always, we have to look uh, what, what happens in, in these changes from one stage uh, to, to another. And mostly we have no, uh, uh, no information and uh, that's uh, 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 one of the, uh, the problems we have to deal with. Okay, um, then um, it's uh, the question, um, what are the mechanisms, uh, and uh, it uh, will be not uh, surprising that uh, I stress every time the social integration, disintegration approach, uh, and uh, the deficit of recognition uh, to look for new recognition in other uh, circumstances and in other um, uh, spaces. And, um, 
Insofar, we have uh, uh, always a uh, look on uh, a recognition. And the, the elites of the right-wing populist groups seems to be able to transform the feeling of inferiority in this part of the population into a feeling of superiority by nationalism, and in this case against uh, migrants, Muslims, asylum seekers, to stabilize their own status. Okay, last but not least, are there developments towards a new fascism? For a moment, uh, let's go back, for example, to Umberto Eco. In 1997, he describes 14 criteria of fascism. And um, first, cult of tradition with religious inspiration. Second, rejection of modernity. Third, mistrust of intellectual actors and establishment. Fourth, totalitarian and closed ideology, uh, and so on. You can read it for yourself. It's, and uh, so it goes further on, nationalism and feeling uh, of, and so on reduction of complexity to eliminate uh, critical uh, thinking. It was an uh, uh, interesting uh, attempt by a prominent journalist, maybe some of you have read it in, in the magazine Spiegel, of the, uh, Dirk uh, uh, Kopjewald, uh, and uh, he uh, takes this criteria and was looking what happens in the US and with Trump. And what, uh, what was his result? He said, eight criteria of this list of 14, yes, it's true, one undecided and five criteria that doesn't work. Um, okay, it was an uh, interesting uh, an attempt. And, but uh, the open uh, question for all of us is, um, is it possible to work with the criteria of fascism from the 19th, or do we need new criteria to have an answer whether, not that it is so, whether a new fascism will come up. That's it. Wir können ja die Diskussion jetzt auf Deutsch führen, weil alle ja Deutsch sprechen. Wahrscheinlich nicht alle. Hm? Yeah. Thanks a lot uh, for these uh, fine analyses uh, about what happens here in Germany. That's good to have sociologists, isn't it? No, because <laughs> here in Germany we tend to say that new fascism cannot arise here because of the history. We learned the lessons of the history, didn't we? And then we really realize by these fine uh, scientists who show, <laughs> prove uh, that these kind of beliefs exist within the population and within all parts of the population up to 50% no, to, of, uh, of devaluation no, of, uh, of some social groups. So this is uh, irritating and this is uh, interesting and I think you will have a question about it, so please ask your questions. 
Yeah. Um, thank you very much. That was an excellent, insightful presentation. I am wondering first if um, what is the relationship of your research, your work, to the studies done uh, in this earlier 20th century from the authoritarian personality of Adorno and the Frankfurt yeah, School for yeah. years. I mean, there, there are quite considerable overlaps, but I'm sure there's differences as well. I would be curious to hear more, uh, but also in sense of um, what are your own conclusions, which I understand and respect that you want to not fully draw, but um, I'm wondering sort of if you would, the same conclusions that they drew then from their study namely being that one, everybody has a tendency towards fascism, that everybody is susceptible only, there's a question of degree, uh, and that of course uh, there is created by the conditions of capitalism, the social, political, and economic conditions that are reproduced uh, in capitalism. So their own conclusions was that nothing short of a total transformation of society would fundamentally bring about the elimination of fascism. So I wonder if that's something you can speak to, maybe. I know it's a political question to a sociologist, um, but uh, yes. That's it. Yes, uh, it's uh, true. Uh, we have uh, um, also the concept of authoritarianism uh, by the, the prominent research uh, uh, Adorno and, and so on, and we, we have put it in our uh, questionnaire, in, in our survey, and it's obvious, uh, especially such persons uh, have a high level of uh, devaluation, uh, and, and uh, we have a broad spectrum, uh, you, have, you have seen, uh, the, the, the whole uh, um, uh, syndrome, and not only anti-Semitism uh, at that time. And uh, that's, um, uh, that's one aspect, and uh, on the other hand, the, the combination with, uh, of uh, capitalism and, and um, uh, authoritarian attitudes and then further on. It's also obvious because uh, uh, authoritarian capitalism is not interested in social integration. The, the authoritarian capitalism is also uh, only interested uh, in competition. Uh, competition between uh, several classes or several groups. And uh, insofar there is a, uh, is a huge uh, development of insecurity in this person. And then they, they want to have uh, new uh, security, and especially uh, working by the right-wing populist groups in a homogeneous society. This cannot work, and it will not work, and also it is dangerous. Homogeneous groups are dangerous, and uh, heterogeneous groups uh, with uh, uh, controversial uh, positions and so on uh, have, an, uh, have another function, and it's uh, much more fruitful for a uh, uh, modern society. And uh, also the, uh, the right-wing uh, populism uh, uh, mobilized experts are not interested uh, into conflicts uh, as a basis of social changes uh, in the society. They want uh, uh, to stabilize and uh, don't want to have uh, new uh, groups in the society. And, and all, all these elements are based on such uh, positions uh, from the 1920s. So, are there any more questions? Yes, please. And afterwards. Um, do you think it makes sense to, for a for, um, broader mainstream to society to look more at um, the historical and um, recent guilt situation of unhumane uh, um, behaviors or um, situations that uh, are uh, caused by white or Western society to kind of conquer this feeling of um, individuals uh, um, to not feel like, um, how can I say, uh, yeah, to even feel guilt, to even feel like um, 
kind of to feel not recognized and to, to feel in a victim situation. Mm. Uh, that's, uh, that's a difficult question, but uh, I'm uh, not convinced, uh, and especially in the young generation. Uh, uh, and uh, if they are in a special social situation, uh, if they have uh, problems with social integration and uh, um, recognition deficits, they are not interested to hear everything uh, about the history. Uh, historical, uh, uh, what happens there. They have to deal with their current situation. They have to, to deal, w to, uh, to come into a labor market, and they are, no they are not interested. Uh, that's my experience. Uh, in, uh, but it, it depends from their perspective. If they ha have a social perspective, then maybe they are interested. They, if they have no perspective in the future, they have no interest to go into the past. That, that's the problem. If, they, uh, if there are young people who have uh, uh, perspectives on the labor market and so on, uh, not no recognition deficits, uh, then they, they may be interested to hear more of what happens uh, in the past. But I stress it again, uh, uh, if they have no uh, perspective, they have no interest, uh, they have to do their daily work, and uh, that's, that's it. Uh, and uh, that's a dilemma uh, to, to work with. The next question over there. My question is, which social class or which social strata is supporting the new right parties like uh, AfD in Germany? And uh, who is uh, supporting uh, violent street fascism? Um, so uh, to the first part, so to the new right, uh, is it more a blue collar uh, workers uh, who support the AfD or is it a so-called middle strata? So uh, employees or uh, state employees that have a fear of uh, of declassification, yeah. uh, who are supporting the AFD. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's uh, uh, concerning the supporting. That's one of uh, the uh, irritating uh, process uh, concerning the uh, uh, AFD. Uh, and the, the AfD started as a, a party of professors uh, uh, in the, in, to, to have a look on the uh, Euro uh, development. And then they, they have uh, um, a problem and they, they uh, a, have an explosive, so to say. Uh, and um, and the, the, the first group of professors goes out, and uh, on the other hand, we, we have a development not only with a, with a blue color, uh, also with, with, uh, with others, uh, lawyers, uh, uh, doctors from several disciplines, and, and so on. Um, and the, the key problem was that uh, we can observe uh, I don't know the, the English term. Uh, I call this rohe Bürgerlichkeit. Uh, that's uh, not the blue color. That's uh, like people like us. Uh, um, and uh, that's, that's a problem because they have arguments. The others, uh, mostly the, the blue colors, uh, people, they have aggression, they have emotions, uh, and uh, only uh, uh, short arguments. And, but the others, they are clever. Uh, that's uh, some of uh, the problem of their irritation concerning the RFD. And, the, and uh, on the other hand, we, we have to um, uh, recognize that they uh, pointed out real problems in this society. Uh, that's not a, a stupid, in a, a not stupid way. And uh, insofar the arguments of the uh, governed uh, politicians are uh, so poor on my, uh, in, 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 in some uh, uh, circumstances. And um, that's, that's uh, a rather a problem because uh, the, the 
the parties, the right-wing political, uh, uh, right-wing populist parties have learned uh, as they came up uh, in the uh, 19th, they, they uh, mostly they were one-issue parties, one-issue parties, and if the, the issue uh, goes uh, uh, back from the agenda, the parties uh, were at end. No, they are clever. They have a broad spectrum of uh, political arguments in the program, and that's uh, attractive, not only to focus uh, on, on uh, migrants and asylum seekers, they have other aspects uh, like the education program and so on. Every time with, uh, with the superiority uh, of uh, the uh, German inhabitants, that's uh, obvious. But they have a broad spectrum, and uh, that's uh, uh, at attractive for, for also other people from other political parties. And they are, and I stress this, they are able um, to, to uh, bundle uh, the, the attitudes uh, to a movement uh, with explicit the emotional uh, uh, concept, and, and that's that's the core problem of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, ruling and uh, governed uh, politicians, and also for the journalist, because the journalists are in a dilemma. Uh, if they don't uh, report about what happens there, they have a problem, and uh, if they report, they have to. Uh, to report the aggressive speeches uh, in, in, the, uh, in the society, and uh, therefore it's a dilemma. The same by the scientists. If we don't make research concerning these issues, uh, we have a problem, and, and the, the society say, well, why you are uh, financed uh, and you, you don't look on, on the problem in the society. And on the other hand, if we produce such uh, 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 results, then we, we have uh, uh, a lot of support by the <laughs> AfD and the NPD, because uh, there are a lot of uh, problematic attitudes. And then they, this group said, the, the researchers in, in Bielefeld always say what we say all the time. <laughs> and what shall we do? Yeah, this was a real interesting point as well of your talk when you said that uh, all these results have been present since 2002, but yeah. nobody was interested in. No, yes, also uh, two, so between 2009 and 2011, uh, as uh, in other uh, countries, uh, always the, the right-wing populism uh, um, uh, parties uh, goes further on. And uh, in the Netherlands, I mentioned it, the Netherlands, uh, Austria, uh, especially in, in, in France, and uh, especially the, the um, conservatives doesn't, uh, doesn't have uh, any interest mm. in, in these uh, cases, and now they have the most problems with, the, uh, with uh, these uh, groups. But uh, it had, could be known, but they don't want to hear this. Uh, I will have the next question, uh, Elisa. Hmm. And one more question, and then we'll go yeah, thank you very much. I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm, I have a little bit the same question. I also wanted to come back to the escalation model, and I wanted to ask you, um, maybe also in comparison, if you compare the 90s to today, um, where would you put the uh, intellectual right-wing movement, fascists, uh, in this escalation model, things like the... Um, the Institute of Staatspolitik, right-wing publishing houses, uh, journals, and so on, because, uh, and is there, um, did something happen? Are they maybe today more important in this escalation model than they had been before? Yes, they have uh, much more influence today. That's, uh, that's obvious, because they have a modern style like the, the journal Compact. For example, uh, it's... Uh, uh, and, uh, and so on, and um, they have a much more surrounding. In, in the past, uh, it was a, a, a small elite uh, in a 
in a castle uh, and they have a debate, the inside debate, and nowadays uh, they have much more influence and they, they are in the, in, uh, sometimes also in the talk shows. And, and, uh, and that's another problem, um, how to deal with, with these. Right? Um, uh, for example, I was invited to, to, the, uh, to the talk show uh, with Günther Jauch uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Höcke uh, has his flag uh, on, on his seat and um, I, I never go into talk shows and, uh, and I, I, uh, I said, oh, what happened there? And, and uh, that's, that's the signal they, they can send now and, and, and in the past it wasn't possible, it wasn't possible to do so. And uh, also the, the intellectual uh, uh, spectrum is much broader. Uh, think about the assistant of uh, um, uh, uh, Peter Sloterdijk, uh, who is the ideologist of the AfD in Baden-Württemberg, uh, and, and, uh, and so on. And uh, they are not stupid. That's the problem. <laughs> Well, I have one more question. Is there more uh, need to speak? So this will be the last question, I think. So please go ahead. I have two points. Uh, one is you posed an interesting question at the end of your uh, speech uh, or your um, presentation. That is, do we need new criteria for fascism? fascism? And I would like to know what your opinion, opinion on this <laughs> is. And secondly, uh, if, if I look at your studies, maybe I've missed a point. Uh, what does gender, which role does gender play in the whole game? Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> um, the, uh, the first question, it's uh, a typical uh, one million dollar question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's uh, the, the question: uh, and, uh, have, uh, Is there an upcoming a new fashion? Is a, is a really new uh, question nowadays? Uh, because uh, nobody uh, couldn't believe that uh, this question will, will come up, and we have to deal with uh, with this. Uh, and, and I'm uh, uh, I'm a little bit irritated. I have pointed out that uh, we have to work carefully with, with this uh, topic uh, concerning a self-fulfilling prophecy, for example. Uh, that's uh, a dangerous situation uh, nowadays. Um, and um, uh, you, you can read, uh, may, maybe you can read the, the article of Dear Kopjewald uh, uh, some weeks ago, and, uh, you, and then you have a picture concerning the criteria and what his argument was concerning what uh, uh, Trump was dealing with. Uh, and uh, sometimes it, it is very uh, surprising. Uh, um, uh, okay, we we will look, and uh, the the second uh, the gender one. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's uh, uh, you observe that I'm irritated. <laughs> um, no, uh, it's uh, we always have included uh, the uh, the uh, gender uh, perspective, and uh, also the results are irritating. Uh, concerning our several elements. Uh, I will show you. Oh. In, uh, in these uh, uh, concepts, we have to have had to observe that uh, uh, women uh, have a higher level of uh, prejudice uh, concerning racism and xenophobia than men. And that was not uh, a single <coughs> result. It was uh, stable over time. In all the uh, research, it was the same result. 
it, it's, uh, it's very difficult uh, for interpretation because uh, uh, is it uh, xenophobia by the women or racism by the women or it is the fear against uh, the foreign men. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, rather a problem. And, uh, um, but uh, the discussion uh, is going on. on but uh, the, the simple uh, uh, view on, on the, all these issues, uh, it's always the, the uh, men, and uh, especially the young men, they, this picture is wrong. And uh, um, concerning the, the uh, devaluation and discrimination, especially, and ca I can say this, I'm uh, 71 years old, uh, the, the older people, uh, in, uh, 60 years on, they have the highest level of uh, devaluation uh, by the uh, market groups. And uh, nobody in the uh, in the society and also not uh, the political parties have interest uh, to bring it on the agenda because they need them for the, for the next elections and uh, that's a problem. They are absolutely uh, uh, without interest to look at the several groups uh, like the, the older people uh, beyond uh, 60 years old, and it's, uh, it's uh, absolutely crazy. I have pointed out that all the years nobody has interest, uh, and they, but, but the older people have influence in the families, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the unions, and, and uh, in, in other uh, uh, circumstances, but uh, uh, the, the society uh, started uh, nervous uh, if there are young people with such attitudes combined with violence, then the society is nervous and then they started programs uh, against them and uh, there, are <laughs> uh, there are no programs concerning the older people. That's uh, unbelievable, but uh, uh, so they are. <laughs> So I said that it would be the last question, but I, I will uh, bring one more because this is kind of an anticipation of the discussion between our speakers. So, Kaspar Tamas, I'll have the opportunity to talk later, but this is just uh, something I wanted to point out because I think it's, it's important. Uh, what regards gender, this is unique to only a few countries. This is true for Germany, for Belgium, for Austria, but on the whole, in the whole world, Women's attitudes concerning race, concerning foreigners, are more liberal than that of men. And uh, uh, look at the uh, American election results, you know, where, 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 where Trump has lost uh, among women. And uh, this is pretty obvious. And, uh, and also the question of age. Uh, in Eastern Europe, from where I come, uh, the uh, most authoritarian and extreme right-wing views are more uh, general among young people than among uh, older people. It's, uh, for example, in, in the city I live in, in Budapest, uh, the majority of university students are on the extreme right. So that's different from, from other, other, other places. So there are great variations. That's yeah. all I wanted to say. Yeah. Do you want to answer to that? One short, short, very short, please. No? Um, um, it appeared to me that we just um, somewhat um, forget, particularly migrant queer feminist movement in Germany, which was emerging in the end, end of 1980s and beginning of 1990s, which are totally wiped off from particularly German feminist queer movement history, but they were there. They were talking about race and fascism from very early time, like Faber Beckenen, like May I Am, like Schuprich des Ob Altern Deutsch, like edited by Hito Steel and Encarnacion Gutierrez Rodriguez. I mean, th those works were already there. And when we are talking about like gender issue and particularly a woman of color attitude towards racism and fascism, 
was has been always there and I, I a little bit sense that we are just making their history a little bit invisible and we need to go back because I think the reason very short comment the reason what we are talking about now that it is new because we white people are facing race uh, fascism fascism has been always there I think yeah. and we need to go back now hear their experiences and their way of facing fascism and put them on the stage and let them talk what they were talking and what we were not hearing till today that it pushed us to call this version of fascism as a new fascism why is it new because whites are experiencing it now so <laughs> It's a comment. So, thanks a lot <laughs> for all to you, for the questions and to Willem Heidmeier. And we see each other at 2.15 p.m. No, for have a little uh, uh, break lunch. No? So, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.